Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat in which I will discuss the first normal form 1NF in data normalization. Now in the prior session, we discussed data normalization. We set the ground why data normalization is critical for database management. In this session, we actually see how data is normalized, how data is achieved using those, those first normal form 1NF, second normal form 2NF, third normal form. Those are mathematical rules. Starting with the first normal form we will discuss today. Now bear in mind that in order to achieve 2NF, you have to achieve 1NF first. In order to achieve the third normal form, you have to achieve the first and the second. So it's very important to look at these steps in sequence, first, second, then third. So that's why it's very important to understand each one separately. Then when we go to the second normal form, we assume the first one has been achieved because you cannot achieve a second normal form if the first one is not achieved, if there's any violation of the first normal form. So this is how you want to think about it. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. First, I'm going to list the conditions of the first normal forms or the rules. Then we would look at an example illustrating the concepts. Each cell should contain only a single value, no sets of values or list. This is called the atomic value. Think about a cell or a field. I would rather deal with cells like um, an Excel. So an Excel would look something like this. You have cells. So this is a cell, you know, this is cell, you know, a1. This is a cell right here. Okay, A1. So this cell should only include a single value, not more than one value. And each cell should have a unique attribute, no multi-value attributes. So if we have something in this cell, let's assume we have the ID of an employee, and this ID is numeric. Then that's the only thing that this cell would accept, numeric, integers, numbers. If it's a date of birth, only date of birth. If it's, you know, we're going to put some character, alphanumeric, then it only that will accept that. So each cell should have a unique attribute, no, no multi-value attribute. And each column should have a unique name. We're going to have columns, okay? And each column, each column will have a name, and we're going to see, and each column should have a unique name. So no duplicate column. We cannot have a column that's date of birth in a database, then another column in the same database, in the same table, date of birth. How could you have two date of birth? And you know, that's like, logically, that's, you cannot, you should not have it. Even if it's the same date, date of birth, why would you have two columns? Let alone you should not, because if that's the case, you're opening yourself of having two different date of birth for the same individual. Also, each record, each row need to be unique, no duplicate. So each row in the database, at the end of the day, it should be unique, different than, than the other one. If you should not have any duplicate rows. So those are what we called first NF or first normal form or one NF. Now, the best way to illustrate this is to look at an actual database, look at some violations and see how, how we would resolve those violations in order to meet the first normal form in a database normalization. So let's take a look at this unnormalized table. We have a member ID, we have the member name, we have date of birth, we have activities participated, and we have email address. So the first thing we notice, we have no duplicate column. In other words, we don't have the member name twice or date of birth. That's good. So we can check this box. Um, each row needs to be unique or duplicate. We have to examine each one. But notice member ID 001, member ID 002, member ID 003. So yes, we don't even have to look at everything. Once we have one thing is unique, then each row needs to be unique. It looks like we met this one. Each cell should contain only a single value, no sets of values or list or list which is this is the atomic value condition. 
Well, let's take a look at this. If we look at Elise, her date of birth is 1995, April 23rd. Activities participated, soccer, debate. Email address, she has an email address.com. It looks like a personal and an email address from her university. Um, is there a problem with this? And yes, we said that each cell should contain only a single value, no sets of values. Notice here, activities participated, we have two activities. We have soccer and we have debate. And under email addresses, we have two email addresses for her. She could have two email addresses, nothing wrong with that. But we should organize this in a database differently because it violates the first normal form. Now, then we did not look, each cell has a unique attribute. For example, date of birth is date. Member name, alphanumeric, we could write anything. Member ID, maybe it has to be integer. We're going to assume that we meet this. But we have a problem. The problem is with the each cell has, some of the cells have multi-value. Uh, multi okay, so what do we have to do? Well, first let's identify the violations. Non-atomic values, the activities participated and email addresses contain multiple value each. List in the list and the activities and email complicates data handling and query. So if we want to look up the email for Elise, what's her email? Why is it two emails and some are one emails? So it's going to complicate things or activities. We'll look up the activities for one individual. It's going to, it's going to complicate matters. So what do we need to do? And also think about if we're having, for example, two duplicate, duplicate columns, like two date of birth, as I mentioned earlier. It's like, how can Bob has two date of birth column? So we should not have or any other column. No two columns should be the same. No two columns should be the same. Or allowing something other than date of birth format, date of birth format to be in the date of birth. So how do we solve this problem? Here's how we're going to solve this problem. We're going to break this table into other tables. So we're going to keep the items that are unique to each table separately. So if we look at member ID, name and date of birth. Those met everything that we needed to met. The other the other ones, activities and email addresses, because we have more than one value. Why do we have more than one value? Look, activities participated, soccer, debate, we could have a third, fourth activity, so on and so forth. Multiple value in each cell. That's not allowed. And this is a violation of 1NF because we cannot query the database as easier as we should have if each one is unique. Therefore, what we have to do is to create table two activities. Activities will have soccer, debate, chess, drama, again, soccer. But again, here what's happening is each member ID, so each row is unique, 001, soccer. Good. 001, well, it looks like 001, but debate. So it's a different row. Notice we are still complying with the 1NF rule in these tables. 002 chess, 003 drama, 003 soccer. Again, the reason we do this because we might have many activities. So it's better to have an activity table and we will link this later on. We're going to see in 2NF how we link things together. Same thing for email addresses. Since uh, any particular member ID could have more than one email address, we cannot list them in the same table. We have to list them. We have to have a table called email addresses. 001 has two email addresses. 001 could have three, four email addresses. It doesn't matter. Now, it's much easier to manage the database. It's much easier to scale. And that's why we needed to create those tables. So each member, each member's date of birth is included in the member's table as a single atomic value per member. So we kept the date of birth here. This is important for maintaining individual member records clearly and concisely. We don't need to break the date of birth from this. There's no need to do that. Activities and email addresses are placed in a separate tables, ensuring each row contain only one type of data related to a single activity or email address. This is what we did. The setup facilitate data management and queries. And with separate tables for different types of data, personal details, activities, and contact, the database structure is not only normalized to comply with 1NF, first normal, but also organized in a way that supports accurate and efficient data retrieval and manipulation. So what we did is we took this original unnormalized table and we turned it into 1NF. Now, why, why this is important? Well, why this is important because we're going to keep on going. We're going to, again, we're going to, on 1NF, we're going to build 2NF. So it's very important to, Clean, we start with a clean 1NF compliance before we go 2NF. 
Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from farhatlectures.com. A university database includes a table with columns for each student ID, name, major, and courses, where multiple courses are listed in a single entry for each student. What is the first step to normalize this database to 1NF? So what we're looking at is something like this. So I want you to try to imagine we have the student ID, name, major, and courses. So we have student ID 756, name Farhat, major accounting and courses. We list more than one course. So we have more than one course listed here. So what is the first step to normalize this database to 1NF? So they're telling you there's a violation of the first normal form. What do we have to do under those circumstances? A, create a separate table for courses. Now, this is, uh, this is a very tempting answer, but you have to be very careful. Yes, if we create a separate table for courses, it did not solve the atomic value problem. Because what you need to do, you need to list each course in its own row along with the student ID. Each course, not create creating a separate table for courses, yes, but you have to be a little bit more further, specifically separate the courses. That's what, that's what you need to do. So just by saying create a separate table for courses, we need more. So let's e list each course in its own row along with the student ID. Yes. Then what you do, let's assume we're taking advanced accounting and uh, we're taking uh, governmental accounting. So what we have to do is 756 advanced accounting, 756 governmental accounting. So yes, we are creating a new table, but list each course in its own row along with the student ID, not create because the problem is the atomic value. And this is what we'll have, for example, 756. Obviously, this is one value. Advanced accounting becomes one value as well. I would say between A and B, I will take out A key B. Assign a unique course ID for each course. Yes, assigning a unique course ID for each course is not a bad idea, uh, but that's going to come later. Why? Because you're going to see we, we could need a primary key. Separate major into different table. No, we we assume the major has one, each student has one major. Now, if we need to have one major per student, students could have a double major, then that's a separate problem. But all what we are told here is uh, multiple courses are listed in a single entry. It did not say multiple major are listed in the same one. Okay, so if we have if a student could have a double major, then we have to kind of do the same thing. So the answer for this question, the best answer is B as in boy. Okay. So C is is incorrect because it's useful. So notice here assigning a unique key. Merely assigning course ID does not address the atomicity, the atomic value problem that we have in the in the in the course in the courses table and the student table that we started with. So what do you have to do now? What should you do? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. That's going to help you, especially if you're studying for your information systems and control exam. Invest in yourself and in, invest in your CPA exam preparation. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.